Yo, what is good, NYU? Welcome back. You are listening to Silence Behind the Violets, podcast episode number eight. Kai, talk to us. We are here with Bella Brozvic and David Basin from NYU's swimming teams. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks Thank for you. having us. For sure. So, uh, I was just looking up at like the roster and stuff. Just I, I always start with hometown for everybody, no matter what guest. And sometimes it gets brought up in podcasts, sometimes it doesn't. Need to know. I mean, <laughs> David, where you're from? Deerfield, Illinois. Yeah. It's a suburb of Chicago. Uh-huh. It's like North Shore near Lake Michigan. I mean, I don't know if, if you've ever, like, you would probably never hear of it, but, you know, I basically just say Chicago usually when people ask me. Yeah. yeah. And so what's life like in Deerfield? Um, it's a lot quieter than here for sure. Like, uh-huh. it's a suburb, but it's like a small ass suburb. So, oh, can I swear? Or is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's small. I mean, it's. It's kind of nice, but it's definitely like a very different environment. That's kind of why I came here to see a mm. different type of lifestyle for sure. How much time would you typically like, spend in Chicago growing up? Not much, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah, I figure. Yeah, I just was in the suburb. Like occasionally with my parents, I would go to like a show there or something like that. My grandma lives like in like not in downtown, but in the northern part. So whenever I visited her, you know, I would be there. But for the most part, I just stayed in Deerfield, I would say, and the surrounding suburbs. Mm. Yeah. And Bella for you, Brentwood, Tennessee. So, did you only live in Deerfield? Yeah. Okay, well, I have grown up everywhere, basically. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I spent the majority of my childhood in Houston. And then for high school, we moved to right outside of Nashville, so Brentwood. Hmm. Um, and that was really fun. It was a very different experience. Um, it was just, I don't know, a suburb outside of Nashville, but Nashville was always really fun to go down to. Um, still is, and now we actually live in right outside of Salt Lake City. Oh, so oh, wow. literally all hmm. over the place, yeah. um, very different places from each other. Um, so I think that moving around a lot is kind of why I wanted to come here because hmm. I was like, well, I've done everywhere in the United States basically, <laughs> so right, might right. as well come to the giant city. Mm-hmm. So this is something that Kai has asked on previous episodes before, you know, following graduation. Like, is New York a place that mm-hmm. you'd like to stay or? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I want to be in the city for sure for at least like the first part of my life. I mean, it kind of depends what opportunities come up, but I right. would say I've had so much fun in New York City. So like, yeah, if possible, I would definitely want to stay here. Yeah. I kind of have to with what I want to do. <laughs> and I also want to. Um, I'm going into like fashion, digital marketing. Mm. So like that's really only here awesome. and like maybe yeah. L.A., but you're not doing that in the Midwest. True. So <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> No, that's cool because like, I went to school here, not at NYU, but the whole point of me coming to college, I was like, I want to live in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously there's the two different sides. I, with NYU, it's a little different. I went to a tiny little school. So NYU, there's the draw of, of the academics and the programs it offers, but that's cool to hear. It always uh, always makes me happy to hear that people want to stick around yeah. um, and don't get you know completely burnt out on it. Yeah. So, um, But kind of talking about your swimming journey, of course, you're here for another reason too on the swimming teams. At what point did you know you could compete in college? Like, was there a certain race, a certain, you know, event that that happened? Um, Well, I started swimming very, very young at the age of, like, five or six in Texas. And I don't know if y'all have heard about Texas sports, but they are on crack. Um, (laughs) So so (laughs) it was, I guess it was always kind of instilled in me that, like, you you go through college. You, like, continue Mm. the sport through college. You don't quit. Um, But then growing, like, going to high school, kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. I started researching programs, which obviously led me to NYU. Um, But yeah, it's like once you start getting those certain cuts um, is when coaches start to notice you, and then you get emails. (laughs) Yeah, I I would not say I had the same experience. I mean, I definitely started young too, but for me, I was just always swimming because, like, it was really fun socially. And then I was starting to get good, like, when I was young. Because I was always, like, tall, so I just had that advantage yeah. before, like, <laughs> we all, like, actually got muscle and technique and stuff like that. Um, but I would say in high school, as Bella said, I also started realizing, like, okay, like, there might be mm. um, more to it than just, like, swimming now. Like, maybe I want to do it in college. I would say, like, sophomore year, I was, like, pretty good in my state, like, compared to a lot of the other mm-hmm. people in my grade and the grade, like, below me. So, yeah, I realized, like, yeah, this is actually an option for me. Yeah. Before that, I honestly didn't even like think about it. I just kind of swam because it was fun and mm-hmm. I was doing well. So yeah. That's so nice for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I did like not have that in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there actually interested. <laughs> I'm actually interested in you because, of course, yeah, you 
you're tall. You're yeah. tall, man. Um, yeah. Does that give you an advantage? Like literally, the fact that you have a longer reach to just reach out to the touchpad yeah. for people is that an advantage? Yeah, it's mm. definitely an advantage. Um, I always like. I think it's a very obvious one, and then there's obviously like non clear ones like some people are like more flexible than me mm. some people some people <laughs> yeah a lot of people <laughs> so you know like when when they see me like uh, probably there's some intimidation there mm. because you would expect me to be like insanely fast but you know there's other people that are sneaky fast for different reasons and everyone has their own like advantage and mm. disadvantage but for me yeah the height the reach yeah. like the power that i might get from my legs like those mm. are definitely huge advantages for sure yeah as a, a short order. person, I want to bring up that height for a second. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so watching David, you can, like, or, like, other pe tall people on our team, they physically, like, enter the water from a dive further out. Mm, yeah. They're able to, like, um, turn further out from the wall, so they're able to turn faster. And I'm Facts. just, like, sometimes I'll see them, and I'm, like, that's so great for you. <laughs> that must be nice. If only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is nice. I'm right. not gonna lie. Well, a lot of coaches, <laughs> a lot of student athletes on their questionnaires, and then a lot of coaches on the roster be like padding the heights of yes. some of their student athletes. I don't think there's any pad. So no. you're listed at six eight. Yeah. I'm on six, him? Eight. No. Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> funny. Nice six, eight. I actually got listed as six seven last year, despite. So I was six seven freshman year, and I grew a little bit. Mm. No they way. listed yeah. me at six seven, even though I told them to change it to six eight. So I was a little pissed. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> But yeah, uh, in high school though, my volleyball coach did that all the time because I played volleyball as well. And yeah. even when I was like six five or six six, he put six eight. <laughs> like when I was a junior and a senior, for no reason, but obviously probably to intimidate other. You know, other teams. That's definitely a guy thing because I feel like girls don't. Yeah, don't for pat our no, <laughs> girls don't all. need to no. seem taller. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So you guys each spoke about a little, like just a little bit about the city. You're starting to talk about like how you knew you could compete at this level but like to delve a little bit deeper what drew you to nyu in particular you want to start? yeah i can okay. go um so my top two schools when i was in the recruiting process were smu and nyu which is obvious smu is obviously a d1 school mm -hmm. back down in dallas um and i think what finally like made me realize i wanted to ed to nyu was one when i came on a recruiting visit it was i felt like i was home mm. <laughs> that sounds so cliche oh my god um but i felt really welcomed by the by the team um and trevor obviously is a giant teddy bear so he was super super um informative and everything during the process and then i mean you can't you can't beat the opportunities here mm. you can't um i also didn't know if i wanted to go back down to the south but that's a different story <laughs> Yeah, um, I would say the same thing about the visit for me. Like, uh, I actually did a spring visit because I did regular decision. And uh, coming in, I was kind of nervous because, like, my personality is kind of, like, jokey and probably immature. And I thought, like, in college <laughs> I was going to have to, like, grow up a little bit. But uh, the people that I went on a visit with, shout out to Mac, Davis, Josh, and Peyton. Oh, um, they were, like, exactly <laughs> like me but two years older. And I was like, oh, wow, like – the culture of this team is going to be perfect for mm. me. So I loved it. And then, um, you know, obviously it has good academics too. Like the math program, both undergrad and grad were really good. So th it was just like the perfect choice. And honestly, uh, I was at that point a little burnt out from swimming, but uh, I didn't know if I was going to swim, but it seemed like the perfect balance. Like uh, not even the fact that it was D3, but just like uh, what those kids said about the team, like, how academics are really valued here and uh it is a good math program it's a good uh comp sci program mm -hmm. so you know i i really liked uh, like all of those things combined the culture the academics you know but still like i ended up you know finding passion in swimming again coming here so it was awesome mm -hmm. i completely yeah. agree with that i was very burnt out yeah in yeah. like senior year of high school because i've been doing it for so long yeah thanks. but i really really valued the balance that they put here on academics and athletics, whereas like some other schools, you're there for athletics, you're not really there for the academic right. part. Yeah, if we went D1, uh, I mean, and some pe for some people this is like a great thing, but mm -hmm. like if we went D1, I feel like we'd just be like in the pool all the time, our future would be the pool. We are like in the pool all the time, David. <laughs> that's true, but. <laughs> Uh, you but know, it would really feel like a job. Yeah, like for real. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Academics would come second, even mm -hmm. though people probably wouldn't like to admit that. Yeah. Um, but sure. here, I think it's actually a much better balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
once you got here, both of you, was there, did you have a welcome to college moment? As in, like, a senior on the team just absolutely smoked you in a, in a race or something? Or, like, you, there was a moment where you were just like, whoa, I'm here. This is a different level. This is, this is something. Not necessarily smoked me, but during, <laughs> no, not in that way, but um, it was during captain's practices freshman year, and I don't know if you guys know who Honor Collins is, but she holds like all the records the on the team. The lore, I know the lore. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and it was a captain's practice, and I obviously knew who she was, and she was trying to go behind me, and I was like, Honor, that's your name all over the record board, right? And she was like, Pella, Bella, go, go. And I was like, okay, if Honor tells me to go, I guess I have to go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and from then on out, anything she told me to do, I did. <laughs> yeah, I kind of forgot about her like oh, until you said that. You were in her group, though. That's true, that's true. Yeah, she was yeah. in my lane. Sometimes she swam with Sprint, um, and usually she went in front of me. She was hella fast. It was yeah, insane it to was watch her do her amazing thing. to just watch Honor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I would say mine was... Uh, as I said, I came from a small town, so I felt like at that point I was kind of the star of my team, as funny as that sounds. But then when I got here, everyone was, most people were faster than me, but, you know, even like I was as fast as like the low end of the team. So it was a completely different environment for me. Like I had to adjust to not being like on the A relays anymore and like um, not that I was not working in high school, but I had to like work really hard just to like you know try to get towards the top yeah. so it was it was a very different like attitude that I had to take on of I was like more of a leader in high school and now I'm just like one of everyone um, but it was really good for me I think because uh, competing with like teammates at practice is like really invaluable for you know improvement and that's not something I really had um, especially towards the tail end of my high school and club career so it was a great environment change our following question is probably a little bit less like on the athlete side of the student athlete um, yeah. experience, but I'll preface this by saying um, there's somebody that we work with. Her name is Lauren. She used to run the show here in 404, but she's going to be over in the new building when that opens. And she was like, bro, you might as well just rename the Welcome to New York City moment like any wild subway stories. Because typically, <laughs> like, your Welcome always, to New York City moment yeah. happens on the subway. But either way, we'll leave it open-ended. I suppose, Bella, we'll start with you. Um, do you have, like, a Welcome to New York City moment or, and or anything that happened in the subway? I do, and it's going to be very embarrassing for me <laughs> to share this story. Um, David knows what it is. <laughs> um, so it was... It's, it's a welcome to New York story. Um, so it was basically like the second day of being here. And as I said, I came from the suburbs, have never had to navigate a city before in my life. Um, and my parents and my uncle and my little sister were waiting in Union Square for me. Um, and they were like, Bella, it's like a couple of blocks, you find it, like we're not gonna come help you find it. <laughs> um, so I went the wrong way twice. Um, had a full mental breakdown in the street. I was like, I cannot make it here. This is yeah. not going to be good. <laughs> a week later, I was fine, but I showed up to Union Square in tears, <laughs> and it was very embarrassing. Right. It was literally from founders. Like, we're not even talking like Britney. We're talking founders, like three blocks, yeah, and I literally. couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, so 17 years old, just red in the face. Yeah, <laughs> it was embarrassing. That's tough. That's brutal. Yeah, uh, it was. <laughs> I go to Tandon, so I was on the subway a lot. And the mm -hmm. funny thing is, uh, I saw this question, but I, I feel like there's so many experiences that, like, I, I just got used to it because I was like always on the subway, especially freshman year. Um, I remember this one time. This is like really random and specific, but one time I was uh, going on the subway with two other Tandon freshmen, and we were going back to Brooklyn, uh, and like we saw that everyone was like backing away from this like one subway car. So them two went in like, if you imagine like I'm here, they went here into a different subway car, but I went here just to another door to the same one. And I go in and immediately see what the problem is. There's like, like throw up everywhere. <laughs> this you woman, so who's like, yeah, she was like, she had her pants off. So like, I don't know if she was about to like take a dump too. Right, right. And she's, she was just like yelling at everyone. And when someone offered her help, she was like, you like, 
mind your own business essentially like yeah. uh, in an appropriate in, in a more inappropriate way uh, -huh. uh and then she like got a needle out at some point i was just sitting and i was a you freshman you took this all in you <laughs> yeah, stayed I was, and witnessed i it. i just like kind of i was looking over sometimes but i tried to just like look down at the ground the entire subway ride home because i didn't want her like yelling at me too i didn't want to be like intimidated so the entire car tell. got out and went to a different one but you no, were like you know it's fine no the entire like half of it <laughs> the that's why i went to a different part of it because we just kind of like it the doors opened and i saw like that there was no one there and like my reaction was just go to another door rather than go to another car i don't know why <laughs> the other two were aaron and anna by the way so oh, they yeah, they went to the other one and then like they came out like laughing and i was like guys like you don't understand what just happened in the car david that that's the like, same <laughs> energy as like dying first in a horror movie yeah <laughs> like, that's true it was dumb i i was dumb for that and i could have switched cars but i didn't i don't know i was just kind of stuck there but like i don't regret it now because it's kind of hilarious to think back on but there's honestly like there's so many like subway moments that I probably can't even remember right now. <laughs> They're just so like brutal, and I'm just like whatever. It's Anna New had York. some crazy ones too. Yeah, facts. Didn't She'll be yeah. our next guest. Oh yeah, that would well, be funny. <laughs> <laughs> She's not. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, you could ask her though, yeah. <laughs> like off record or something. Well, that's what you leave Deerfield, Illinois, for. Mm -hmm. for <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solid, yep. I mean, there's nothing <laughs> like New York City in that sense. Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, on a more lighter note, I guess, uh, or it could be, but computer for Coach Trevor, you mentioned that he's a teddy bear. That's definitely not the impression that Kyle and I um, <laughs> get as coworkers of his. Um, I mean, Trevor's great. It's it's clear that he runs a, a fantastic program. Um, seems like a, a pretty tight ship from the outside looking in, but just talk about competing for him, the fact that he's an alum um, of the program and, and kind of what all that means and what he brings to the table. Um, I love a Trevor. <laughs> he can be very blunt and very brutal, but once you kind of like, I don't know, get on his good side, I guess, you kind of like break down that little barrier. He is one of the funniest people you ever meet. <laughs> But I don't think he tries to be funny in like an intentional way. He just is. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I can I can see what you guys are saying. He's extremely blunt. And if yeah. yeah, I think like you go through certain phases with Trevor. Like I came in like kind of scared of him because you know he's this big guy. Um, Wait. And obviously you're tall. I know, I know. <laughs> but like <laughs> it's my freshman year. Like, like what am I supposed to do? I thought obviously I'm taller than him, but. He's like the head coach. He's someone that I want to impress. Voice. Someone that I wanted, like, for me, you know, to look good in front of him. And uh, I was even uh, texting him. Like, when he would text me, I would respond back with, like, thanks, coach, stuff like that. And then this upperclassman <laughs> was just like, just call him Trevor. What are you doing, dude? And I was like, wait, really? He's like, okay with that? Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, the more, the more I, like, time I had with him, the more, like, as Bella said, he got, like, just very mm -hmm. silly. Like, once you kind of break through – yeah, he's funny, and um, it's kind of nice to just be able to talk to him, like, once you get past that scared point. Because, okay, yeah, I'm obviously bigger than him, but some <laughs> of the freshmen aren't, and they probably yeah. ha felt the same way coming in. But, yeah, now, like, honestly, like, sometimes we just, like, text random stuff about, like, basketball or whatever. He loves yeah. to send the most yeah, random things in Yeah, he sends, like, random text. tweets. <laughs> That's funny. What are some of the random things that You he will say something to him in passing, and four days later, you'll get an article about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. That's yeah, super funny. Um, I love that. But yeah, it's always funny seeing the freshmen coming in every year because they're all terrified of him. And uh, we were all like that. Yeah. Sure. Um, and we try to convince them that he's not scary. Like, he just seems scary, but he isn't. Um, and then eventually they start, they start to open up and figure that out. But mm -hmm. yeah. Trevor's great. So not everyone. But not everyone. Do. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you recall any freshman stories where they were like super scared and you just like it's legitimately laughable now? of like the extent to which they were and like the situation that happened. I think we were all scared to just walk into his office and like ask him something. Right. And yeah. now I'm like, if a freshman or an underclassman will say that, I'm like, just walk in. Yeah, of course. He's sitting there in the dark. <laughs> Like, Literally just go dark. ask him. Yeah. He loves his dark office. He complains <laughs> about the lights all the time. And we're like, why are you sitting there in the dark? It's creepy. And he's like, the lights are too bright. Yeah. <laughs> right, One of his little quirks. <laughs> yeah, it's a little gloomy in there. <laughs> for sure. Um, you guys travel a lot, as mm -hmm. pretty much all NYU student athlete does. Um, do you have any travel stories for us? Any, any fun ones from whether it was a, a bus ride, a plane ride, anything like that? Um... <laughs> so back to Trevor. Um, <laughs> we get to an airport, and he makes sure all of us get through, like, security, 
security, everything. But then you will never see that man until you get on the flight. He will leave you in the dust so fast. Last year at UAAs in Atlanta, um, we're going to Emory University. I don't know if you've ever been to the Atlanta airport. It is weird. They have that like tram shuttle thing. Yeah, Yeah. none of us knew that. But he got on it right away, left us all in the dust trying to figure (laughs) it out. Um, And then we just saw him at baggage claim. And he was acting like nothing happened. Like he didn't leave his entire team, (laughs) like trying to figure out the the airport by ourselves. Um, Yeah. He also, we also get there like so early. He's like, you know, your stereotypical airport dad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. three hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. Domestic oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of Trevor, I wasn't even going to mention this, but actually you bring up a good point. Trevor at the airport is funny when something goes wrong, which is honestly more often <laughs> every than time. not. Every mm. time. Something gets, goes wrong every time. Yeah. It could be even like a small thing. He would get so pissed. <laughs> Sorry to call you out, Trevor. but it was. No, I Trevor think it's so Mad funny. is the funniest thing you will ever see. <laughs> what does it look yeah. like when Trevor's like He, he just it. like, he talks under his breath a lot. Yeah. And it's just like every cuss word <laughs> under the sun. It was yeah. like the most like horrible things you can think you can say. But it's so funny funny because he doesn't let that slip often and then when it does all of us are laughing like we can't be like mad with him because we're just laughing yeah 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 Yeah. and and then he just starts getting mad at other like irrational things because he's already (laughs) in that like mood and we're just like oh yeah yeah so a bag is overweight by four pounds and then he's pissed that his shoes untied (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. but yeah like this most recent time for some reason we had to like print all the tickets at once or something like that rather like we couldn't go to the individual Mm -hmm. booths to print our tickets and he was like sending everyone he was like you guys go over there david go tell them to come here (laughs) tell them to come here and i told them and they didn't come here and he was like this is unbelievable oh my god (laughs) all of our names were spelled wrong oh that too they were spelled wrong but they were like half of my middle name was attached to my first name and i'm like that's not a a name yeah but yeah so that was a whole whole mess yeah one of, one of our teammates didn't have a ticket oh, and why yeah. you didn't get him a ticket and the flight was booked to florida yeah yeah that was that, a rough i don't know how we got yeah. on, i don't know how Jane no got yeah on that I, flight. We, I think we legitimately thought that he was just gonna have to figure out something else because i thought he was gonna have, have to have be put ticket. on a later flight yeah. and then he was or on just like cut from the team sorry cut. Whoops. <laughs> um so you're speaking of florida of course you, you know you guys go on a train trip there every year mm-hmm. um and that, that's unique for swimming at, as far as i know is like doing a, a big involved trip like that strictly to train um so i'm just curious like take us inside that a little bit what goes into that what you're specifically focusing on during that mm-hmm. time and i mean i'm sure part of it is also just like team bonding and having some fun yeah. you know in the sun together yeah yeah so we go on a training trip to florida during j term and we got to do it freshman year and then sophomore year obviously covid and then last year it got canceled two days before we were supposed to go. That was horrible. That was unfortunate, um, yeah. But training trip is basically where, so like you said, we go there just to train, whereas I think a lot of other sports will go down on a training trip and do a bunch of games or meets. Um, so training trip is basically eight days straight of death, but it's fun because you're in the sun <laughs> and you're not here. <laughs> um, so we train short course yards here mostly, but then when we go down to Florida, we're able to train long course meters, um, which helps us build that aerobic capacity a little bit more, I think. Um, and J term in itself is just straight training to try and build up um, going into competition season or, yeah, competition yeah. season. Championships. Yeah, championships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's fun. We get to stay in these cute little villas um, right on a right on a private beach. It's yeah, semi-private. Yeah. Um, and it's fun because we're just there with our teammates. It's warm. Yeah. That is the best part of it. <laughs> we yeah. get back here and it's graying cold. Yeah, that sucks. Um, um, yeah, yeah, going off of that, I mean, you described it perfectly. Basically, like, it's the hardest training mm. that we ever do. Yeah. But I think the point is that we do that and – the compensation is that oh it's warm and we get yeah. we get to kind of chill on mm. the private beach or yeah. like yeah. in our villas so yeah it's like it's almost like he's trying to like you know make us happy you know when we're training so that we're not fully miserable by the fact that we're just doing doubles literally every day mm-hmm. besides for one so yeah um i had a really good time this year my freshman year i was still like adjusting to it so Mm. it was tough but this year i came into it knowing it was going to be tough Mm -hmm. and uh, i think i got a lot more out of it and 
you know, as Bella said, we have these villas and that's a lot more fun too because a lot of us, especially the upperclassmen, like we're already rooming with like swimmers, but mm -hmm. um, in the villas we're rooming with people, I guess, around our alphabetic last yeah. name. Uh, yeah. So it's just, it's just like mm -hmm. random roommates basically. Yeah. And you become friends with, uh, not like we're all really close closer. anyways, yeah. but closer, like yeah. uh, you, you become even closer with like these specific roommates and we're cooking every meal together. Um, you know, whether it's like watching TV or chilling on the beach together mm -hmm. or just like chilling at the table, um, maybe playing a little poker. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. yeah, so stuff like that. Uh, it's nice too during J term that we don't have to do anything but train. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that's especially good at training trip where yeah. it's warm, like you can go outside and toss a football if you want because mm -hmm. you have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. If you're not too tired, because like there are times when I'm just trying to nap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had men's basketball on last week and they were saying that during this past J term where like they wake up, they, you know, watch film, they go practice, play, whatever. He was like, I felt like a professional basketball player. Mm -hmm. You know, where like exactly. this week, like your only focus. Yeah, you're just doing it's a pretty good deal. That. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I wanted to talk about like just the feeling of whether it's setting a program record, right? Like you're named an all American. Like like you you touch the wall, like you look up and like boom, like that number is there, that time is there. Like what's that feeling like for you both? It's a really, really great feeling. Cause like you're not always gonna drop in your best event. So when you get even that like couple tenth drop, mm -hmm. it's the best feeling. Like at our mid-season meet, I dropped in my hunter fly, which is my best event. Yes, sir. And <laughs> <laughs> and I like kept looking at the clock. I was like, wait, did I read that right? Like that says what it says. And it's like sometimes you just don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the best feeling. Or when your relay does like extremely well, relays are the best. I would swim a relay over an individual event every day. Yeah, <laughs> same here. Uh, last year, like. The focus for me was um, a relay that I was on, like 200 freestyle relay. That was a good relay. Yeah, and like all four of us were in sprint. We were just training like relay starts and like um, the turns and st just like, yeah, we were training 50 free like basically every day at some point leading up to conference. And then we didn't get uh, well, the time that we wanted at conference. So then we swam in again at NYU Invite, which is like a last chance meet a week later. Mm -hmm. And like when we hit the time that we wanted, we were so happy. It was so crazy. I was already pumped up from like so much caffeine. So I was like jumping <laughs> up and down anyways. <laughs> and then when like I saw the clock, I was like, holy shit, that was crazy. Right. Way better in my, I mean, yeah, you said it. Way better mm -hmm. than an individual event for me when like you get four people and you go really mm -hmm. fast time and you all get to enjoy that together. Yeah. And then with our coach too, it was so awesome. And like, yeah, that's the, that's the part I look forward to the most every time. I'm going to hype up that tuner free relay a little bit more. So at UAA's, they were swimming. Obviously, they had competition with them in every other lane. They were able to get that time at NYU Invite with no one else swimming. Yeah, it was facts. pure, pure adrenaline wow. and energy. Wow. And it was, as someone who was watching it, it was so fun to watch. Yeah. Because we knew what time they were going for to qualify for NCs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and when they got it, it was insane. Yeah. And we wanted to get the record. Um, oh, was it the record they, too? Well, because they got the record in midseason, we were trying to get it again. Oh, that yeah, was with yeah. with Lawrence. Well, yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. that's so um, yeah. So that was yeah, that was great. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Well, I was going to ask yeah. about relays actually a little later oh, okay. on because um, the meet against LIU was actually the first one meet that I was able to come to, um, and even beforehand, like everyone else working the meet was like, just, just wait for the relays. Like it's so hype. There's yeah. so much energy. I was like, all right, cool. And then sure enough, you know, there's not only from the, you know, the, the people competing, but the whole team just like comes together around, around the relays. So, yeah. I mean, you answered it a bit, but is it just the fact that like there's more teammates to support kind of coming together? Um, like has that always been the most fun events throughout swimming? Mm -hmm. I'd say like even since I was like six years old, mm. relays are yeah. the most fun because mm. yeah. you're doing it with your teammate. It's not all on you, mm -hmm. um, and you have that energy from other people as well. Yeah, um, I will say that meet against LIU, we were dead tired. <laughs> we were exhausted. There was like it was supposed to be a dual meet with Stevens, and then right, yeah, that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. And then somehow right. Right. Trevor found a random team for it to come yeah. swim against yeah. us. Yeah. Um, you mentioned like just like tenths of a second before though like like do you know mm -hmm. when you're in it like yo I have a chance like I might have just PR'd 
Or is no. it truly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, truly. You're just um, like, yo, I just. I think it depends. Your best events, no, because you're always going to be kind of like right within it. Um, but like um, on my hundred fly, I came back faster than I ever had. And I had no idea. I didn't mm. even know I came back that fast until. Mm. Um, my coach was like, you just came back in a 29 too. And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I was like, no, Come I didn't. <laughs> it. Yeah. I think like you might have some idea if you know how fast the people around you are. That's true. Cause like, that is true. Like your yeah. If I like somehow finish half a body length ahead of the person next to me, I'm like, oh my God, I just popped off unless they screwed up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> I agree with Bella that like, we're always at this point, like we're probably not going to be dropping or adding that much. Mm -hmm. Um, and also we're in sprint events so it's like a little bit more like difficult to just like go that fast because it's mm -hmm. only yeah it's so yeah. close within a couple tens i'm sure like someone swimming the 500 or a mile is more aware of like their yeah. pace and like mm -hmm. if they hit it or not um and yeah again like people around them are going to be much farther ahead or farther behind depending on how they yeah. did but yeah for mm -hmm. us it's just like that's why the first thing we do is look to the wall because we don't even know like mm -hmm. we we might have an idea that we went fast, but yeah, just no like a burst of energy. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I'm in the zone, and then yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Especially in like it's a quick. fifty or a hundred, you yeah. also like have no idea. Like mm -hmm. everyone yeah. at a championship meet, everyone's gonna be so close to each other. You don't even know like what place you got until you look at that board. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, because I was when I was at the meet against mm -hmm. LA, I was doing the PA first time mm -hmm. I'd ever done PA for swimming. Mm -hmm didn't really know how everything flows i missed announcing the first two events because i was like whoa and <laughs> yeah. then things started picking. i learned happens. i like figured out how to read the timing mm -hmm. you know machine and i was like okay i know what's coming up i know who won yeah and then it's just boom boom yeah. boom especially yeah. with the sprints so yeah that was yeah. just cool to dual meets go see. fast yeah. mm -hmm. they go speedy yeah. Yeah. yeah on taper i would also say like sometimes i just straight up black out during a race like it just happens <laughs> yeah. and sometimes then, you have to yeah right. and then i i'm at the wall and i'm like oh what just happened <laughs> and then especially yeah. at a 50 yeah exactly that's a mad dash and that's like, yeah that's <laughs> splash and dash so it just mm. kind of happens and then it's over <laughs> yeah. you know yeah yeah um well speaking of the, all this i mean what goes into someone specializing or choosing an event um well from a very very young age my coaches declared me a flyer <laughs> and so that is what i've been my whole life mm, sure. um but i don't know i guess it's just what you're naturally better at um and then obviously you kind of specialize from there. Like from a very young age, I was never gonna be a backstroker. I have never been a backstroker, um, which is a very unfortunate thing. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then you kind of specialize, at least for stroke events, you specialize between like 100 or 200, or you can specialize in both, or like distance swimmers will be 500,000 mile, sprinters will be like yeah. 200, 150. Yeah. I mean, I feel like at, at a certain point in your career, you know, like, if you are more like the power type of swimmer mm -hmm. or like more of a, what's it called? Like, you maintain energy for longer. So, like, that's where you separ mm -hmm. uh, separate between distance and sprint. Yeah. But yeah, as Bella said, like, sometimes, like, your coach, when you're young, just kind of puts you in a certain group <laughs> and then you just train that until you're good. So, yeah. some people don't yeah. even get to choose. But uh, I don't know. I feel like when I was 11 or 12, I was good at everything. And then I started kind of gearing more towards freestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, in high school, I started trying to bulk up more because I used to be skinny. Um, and I feel like when you're bulky, maybe that's more sprint vibes. <laughs> mm -hmm. While, yeah. I mean, that's not the case for everyone, though. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I started to, you know, lose energy faster. But I was able to have more power when I swim. So that was obviously mm -hmm. going to gear me towards sprint. Yeah, I mean, you just have like insane underwater, so I feel like <laughs> that's gonna be some for yeah. a flyer. Yeah, Trevor really pushed me into more of those. But what's yeah. nice about college as well compared to club is in club, um, you train everything. Like even if you're not good at it, like they're not gonna have specialized practices as much. Yeah. But at coming to college, like I train for fly and I train for free, um, whereas like he trains all sprint events. Yeah. Um, and I do a lot of 200 pace work, and then obviously in distance, they train for the mile. Right. Um, so we're not just training for every event for shits and gigs, but. Right. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like in my high school, there were two kids that did like 500 practices, and then everyone else did the same practice, and occasionally mm -hmm. there was like stroke or whatever. Yeah. But here there's like three different groups. Mm -hmm. One of the groups is split into two. Mm -hmm. There's stroke days, there's like all this. Like we yeah, do like we know what we're doing yeah. every single practice. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's that helps us specialize even more into like you know what we're good at. Yeah. 
Um, we also, like, I know we do four lifts a week. You guys do three, I Yeah, think, we do but three. And then yoga. Mm -hmm. And then distance mm -hmm. might do two or three, but also they spin. So it's, like, kind of divided up like that, too. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. It just kind of depends on, you know, what you need for training mm -hmm. outside of the pool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, one of the next things that we had on here was just, like, about the mindset, but you began to, or rather, honestly, pretty much address that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do want to talk about atmosphere, though particularly with nationals. Mm -hmm. Talk about like the atmosphere there. NCAAs is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously at like a conference meet, you're probably gonna end up swimming more just cause there's less people yeah. um, to make finals. But NCAAs was so much fun. I remember watching everybody swim. Um, I, my roommate is Jessica Flynn, who obviously won yeah. nationals. No. <laughs> um, she is my claim to fame and I will <laughs> have that until the day I die but <laughs> that was probably one of the most exciting races I've ever seen in my entire life so um true. she loves to leave it to the last 25 and 100 100 <laughs> back and she had us all stressed out to the max um and it was the same I think it was the same girl from UAs right uh yeah Megan yeah something from I don't know. Emery yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not the biggest fan of Emery but it's fine <laughs> um but yeah so seeing like part two of that was really really special. Same with like Caitlin yeah, for the two fly. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Except Caitlin didn't leave it to the last twenty five. She just kind of no, she took yeah. off. No, I remember. Yeah. I watched both. Mm -hmm. I watched she took races. off. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, I had the same exact experience. I was I only swam two events there, um, so I was done after the second day. But really? the best part, yeah, just oh, you met just me got to watch. That's there. so nice. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Watching is so much nicer, and honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just exciting, yeah. honestly. Like yeah, sure. I love when my teammates are doing well. I mean, not only Jess and Caitlin winning, but there are so many other people yeah. that had great yeah. individual swims. The like, Mile Boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. facts. I was mm -hmm. counting for Thomas during mm -hmm. that. Like, um, so I was literally like very involved in that, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, like I think the environment at UAA is, is honestly pretty similar in my opinion. Yeah. Like it, it was just as exciting. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was just as exciting to watch everyone else race. Like, uh, I honestly get pretty tired from uh, like being on my feet all the time, but like, mm -hmm. I didn't care. I was on my yeah. feet the entire yeah. time, just yeah. like watching everyone do their thing. It was awesome. So yeah, yeah, it's that's the most fun part about swimming, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Watching like your friends compete, like knowing the hard work that they've put in yeah, and seeing yeah. them get something seeing out of it is really special. Sure. Also, so NCAA's sick. is even better because. That's like an extra month, month and a half of training, yeah, and it's such a true. much, mm. much smaller group of um, of us. So I think in midi there were nine of us. <laughs> um, mid distance is the group I'm in. Yeah. Um, there were nine of us going, and there was one boy, Nathaniel, <laughs> and so he got to be very <laughs> close with the eight of us girls. Yeah. <laughs> and then at NCAA's we have three separate like vans that we drive in. Um, to the pool and to the hotel and that's always super fun because we're like smushed in together <laughs> yeah and <true>. trevor <laughs> trevor drives the mid one and he <laughs> did some illegal things on that van but <laughs> we're not gonna, gonna speak about he, driver, yeah. <laughs> um, he thinks he's still in new york even right. though he mm -hmm. is not yeah. um yeah he decided he was gonna turn right but he was gonna turn right from the third lane over <laughs> and Classic. we were, we were mm -hmm. like trevor i don't i don't think you can do that as he's like pushing his way at a 45 he was like, yes i can <laughs> hopefully the indianapolis police is not watching this podcast yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they're gonna come are. for trevor yeah, sure. yeah i mean your voice has got to be shot after the oh year. i had no voice <laughs> no shot, right? yeah none. yeah for sure after that two fly and those hundred and the hunter back final Done's none mm. yeah absolutely mm. none <laughs> oh another funny moment that i think should be brought up is after uh jess won that hunter back mm -hmm. trevor like what he, he like grabbed Thomas's hair or something like that. <laughs> Thomas was crying. Yeah. And I would like to bring that up. Trevor oh, was on the verge of crying. True. Um, Gabby, our other roommate, and I, we were like, we get roommate privileges when they were doing the like awards and we like snuck up there <laughs> <laughs> to get um, closer pictures of her. We we're like, we're her roommates, it's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that yeah. was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Trevor at uh, NCAA's is a different Trevor. I remember <laughs> seeing, like, we had, a, we had a photographer uh -huh. to show you guys, and some of the pictures of him and the excitement. <laughs> yeah. All time. That's awesome. <gasps> yeah. 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 Um, I, you, both of you sort of have just answered it and given us context, ba context based on the conversation so far, but kind of the mentality of dual meets versus the big, you know, big tournaments mm -hmm. or competitions, however you want to call it. Um, 
how it's obviously very different but like how how do you approach a dual meet it seems kind of clear how you approach national it's like you know big event month of training goes into that with a, a tight-knit group um and a crazy atmosphere but then on the flip side dual meets how are you going into that is that just like um sort of a training opportunity yeah or? yeah yeah dual meets we don't ever rest for we're usually actually pretty tired for um mm. for them so our times don't really matter and often we'll be like a couple seconds off our best time mm. Um, what matters is getting up and racing. So our coaches don't care what our time is. They care if we get our hand on the wall first and we get the points. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's nice to not have to worry about times for that and just to be able to get up and race with your teammates. And then obviously for our mid-season meet in our conference and NCAAs, we will go through a period of what we call taper. So we start going down in yardage and we do like lighter lifts and stuff like that. So we're, our bodies aren't as tired going yeah. into that um, big meet. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're currently approaching, mm -hmm. in fact. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, you, you said it best. But like, honestly, for dual meets, I think uh, there's also a couple different like varieties because sometimes we're in a dual meet against like Johns Hopkins, who we really want to <laughs> beat. Mm -hmm. um, and other times we're in a dual meet against a team that we might beat a little bit easier and we like know it coming yeah. in. So it's always like a race opportunity whether that be against like the team that you're facing or maybe against your own teammates, because mm -hmm. honestly, there's a lot of us that are like pretty close in times together. Yeah. So yeah, it's just an opportunity to see like how, how you can do like, you know, it's more like mental even because mm -hmm. yeah, as Bella said, we're really tired, like at a lot of the dual meets and we just want to push ourselves to, to do the best that we can do regardless of the time. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at a championship meet, on the other hand, it's all about, I mean, we, yeah, we want to beat the people next to us, but it's also about getting those best times, mm -hmm. um, getting those. Getting you know, the cuts yeah, for the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I mean, I bring up the LAU meet just because mm -hmm. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, they're, they're a D1 team. It's a D1 program, of course. Um, obviously, hearing that, maybe, you know, certain teams coming in are a little more tired, um, mm -hmm. not as rested or, or whatever. But you beat them really easily. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, the, obviously with, with sports like swimming and track, it's times. Like, yeah. it's so clear. Yeah. It's not like with a sport like basketball, it's like, oh, I can see the raw potential. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, this is your time. And yeah. This is how good you are. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, like it or not. It's pretty direct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and obviously, like, you had an opportunity to go to a Division One school. So is the difference between levels in, in college swimming, like, is there a big gap? Or was that meet just a just an anomaly or like I would say yes and no the big schools like SEC Big Ten all mm -hmm. those like the California schools right, right. yeah they are crazy for sure um but then there's a lot of D1 schools that don't have funding and they're like not mm. good at all mm. um whereas I'd say like I feel like UA the UAA conference is yeah. pretty pretty good yeah overall. it is it is um so like NYU we're one of the top D3 teams yeah. and we're faster than I'd say most D1 schools don't come from me on that if that's I incorrect I have but no idea. <laughs> if it's said um, on here it's a fact <laughs> Come on, yeah, that's true that's oh, true oh, it oh. is a fact um <laughs> but yeah so i don't think the division that isn't other than when it comes to like ncaa's that obviously is a very stark difference but i don't think it, it has as much sway mm. as it does as say in other sports yeah i mean there's definitely like a lot of people on our team that could swim for a d1 program pretty easily yeah yeah um, but I, I don't even – I didn't even look into, like, how LIU is ranked. But I know that, like, we're probably kind of close to, like, Fordham maybe, let's say, or maybe even better than them. Like, I always thought it would be a good, you know, competition to try to race against them. But, yeah, there's, like, a lot of D1 teams that are um, also smaller than us, you mm -hmm. know, get less funding. Um, and they're just D1 because they give out scholarships, I guess. But they're yeah. not actually, like – they they might have different access to equipment too. Like it's right. it just like depends. Mm -hmm. so yeah, there's yeah. so many factors. Yeah, for sure. um, but yeah, definitely like SEC, Big Ten, ACCs. Those are a lot faster than us. Pac ten. Pac twelve. Pac twelve. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, that those are like there's a pretty stark difference between us yeah. there. Yeah. But then it kind of just like levels out between like a bunch of schools. Mm -hmm. D two as well. D three. Yeah. 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 No. Well, Fordham doesn't want that smoke. So. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's the only reason we haven't been racing. Uh, huh? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, we want to talk about just how close the team is. You mentioned the Florida trip and how that, in in, in its own way, it's just, is a very much team bonding experience. But, you know, what are some other elements that go into the team bonding? And really just how does everyone become so close mm -hmm. to what they do? 
I think we've become so close just because we spend so much time together. Um, we've got eight practices a week. We're, the, we're I mean, so y'all have seen us in Palladium. We're yeah. never not there. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> so I think, you know, being there at 6.30 in the morning together, like no one really wants to be there if we're being honest, right. but mm-hmm. you're all there together, so it makes it better. Yeah. Yeah. And then usually you find your best friends there. Yeah. Like, I definitely did. Yeah. But for sure. And then we go to like the dining halls after and just complain about oh. how much we hated practice. And why NYU swimming owns their dining hall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We they get so annoyed with us when we take over every single table. <laughs> They actually changed the tables from freshman year, I they think did. specifically, so we couldn't take up the entire <laughs> length of the Yeah, because yeah. that's what used to happen. We used to do, we, we had used to have two of them, and then we would add yeah. chairs. Yeah, it would just be in the way, but we were yeah. like, we just we're, want we everyone to care. be They the can table. go around us. Yeah, fact. Um, yeah, uh, to echo what Bella said, like, we're, we're together so much, and I think, uh, like, the best part about swimming is, like, they welcome you in right away so even yeah. during welcome week like there was immediately a bunch of events that like the seniors organized for us and every year we like try to organize them so yeah so that like the freshmen have the same kind of feel that we did mm-hmm. unfortunately that didn't happen during the the one COVID year but otherwise i think we've been yeah. pretty good about it and that's because you have like an immediate like kind of family to be with like that's obviously going to make us just bond a lot like even before season mm-hmm. starts and so then when season starts and we're always together it's like we're already friends and now we're actually going to become super yeah. close and um also um wait were you here you weren't here during the s- sophomore year right no i wasn't okay i think that uh that also kind of like made me a lot closer to some of the friends on the swim team that were still there mm-hmm. like during <laughs> sophomore yeah. year like, no, we're stuck here in an apartment together yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we right. we kind of had to chill together um or like in small groups obviously because of covid mm-hmm. and that like yeah you know going through that unique struggle together too was really bonding mm-hmm. and yeah i guess it's just like having that common struggle in general yeah. is gonna make us super close and i think coming to school in a place like new york city can be very jarring especially as a, like an 18 year old who's never lived in this kind of situation before. And I yeah. think ha- immediately having that group of like 60 people yeah. who are there to help you and there to like help you succeed yeah. makes it so much better. Yeah. It makes it like not as scary. Yeah. And, and it's such a big team, as you said, 60 yeah. is probably like what it is right now, but at some point it was like a <laughs> hundred. I swear. It was way oh. too big. Yes. I know. <laughs> I um, know. I'm putting like putting the rosters up. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. putting the headshots <laughs> online. I was like, this is gonna take yeah. me Bad two people. and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, media day be like eight hours. <laughs> yeah, we had like eight different groups. Shifts. Yeah, I feel yeah. bad. I know. Last year's was rough. My fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this year was better. This year was better. Though. This year was better. <laughs> this year was better. Yeah. This year looks. was nice. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. So you know, having that many people, there's gonna be so many different personalities, and you're bound to just like find a mm-hmm. matching personality that you know same interests, like even outside of swimming. So, yeah. You also yeah. know each other's pain. Like you're going through the mm, same practices, exactly. you know. Mm. Yeah. You know how sore everyone is. You know everybody died in that one practice. Right. Like, I'm right. right there with you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it seems too like um, obviously the men's and the women's teams are technically separate, but mm-hmm. it seems like it's one team until oh, you yeah, get sure. yeah. into a race, and mm-hmm. it's just broken up by that. Yeah. Um, so that's just really cool to see. Like, 60 per side, roughly. So mm-hmm. well yeah. over 100 people to yeah. just have kind of you know in your corner that's really cool no, yeah, yeah like i know some d1 teams are separated separate. and they practice at different times oh, okay. i can't imagine that that's though. another thing that drew me to nyu smu is separate and i didn't really like that yeah yeah, yeah. and some like and they were completely separate some d1 uh schools only have a girls team too mm-hmm. which is also that one yeah. school at mid-season what was that oh new they Hampshire. only had a women's team it was in yeah. new hampshire yeah. yeah it's like yeah it's a lot better that we have and and like all the girls are still going on not all but you know, you guys are still going on the guys' intervals, so it's like we're literally doing. When I see a guy going on an interval with like that, a lot of girls are on. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> go, go over to the fastest <laughs> interval, please. Yeah. Fact. <laughs> yeah. Um, but last, I mean, you've sort of addressed it, but like balancing, you mentioned six thirty a.m. these early morning practices, and mm-hmm. don't quote me on this, but I think swimming has the longest season. Oh, it. for sure. Like, I, I believe yeah, we're it. Like, I'm March. pretty confident that Straight you have through. the longest season. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a serious grind. Every student athlete, especially living in New York, balances so much. Mm-hmm. And at a school like this, yeah. right? But two a days, eight practices a week, you know, 
early yeah. in the morning going yeah. for months and months and months and months like how do you do it i guess <laughs> time management if you do not know how to manage your time you do not make it mm. as a student athlete um especially with how much we're there i mean on our double days we're there 6 30 to 9 most of us will have practice at 9 30 if we're lucky we'll be able to go like get a nap in or something before we're back you mean four to six thirty. what did i say you said practice at 9 30 Yes. Yeah, yeah. Class at 9.30. <laughs> um, and then we're back again from 4 to 6.30, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. We have four mornings a week. Oh, uh, yeah. Depending. Yeah. But yeah, usually. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I mean, it takes some adjusting to, but it's also not like high school, which is nice because most, I'd say most swimmers do doubles in high school as well. Yeah. But then you're doing like eight hours of class in high school and then coming here it's a little bit easier to manage yeah. in my opinion yeah. other people don't feel the same way <laughs> but no yeah i agree it's it, it was easier for me to manage it here to be mm -hmm. honest because like you're not going to class and then staying there like you have some yeah. time off um i mean i would say the practices are definitely a little bit harder at least for me than here. high school yeah oh yeah yeah so that that makes up for it and like obviously we're going to be a little bit more tired mm -hmm. um another thing i want to bring up besides for the time management is just like leaning into like you know hanging out with your team because I think if you just like if you went through that long of a season and just like chilled by yourself the entire time it's a lot harder than if you're oh, yeah. uh, kind of like chilling with your teammates in between the mm -hmm. practices yeah. or like at nights that yeah that makes it a lot more fun it makes me a lot more happy mm -hmm. rather than just like you know kind of swimming and doing nothing else you know yeah. you have to kind yeah. of like enjoy yourself in the city too or else it's kind of impossible yeah yeah then what's the point of coming to school yeah yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all the aspects yeah yeah. Sure. yeah you got to yeah yeah i know for but there I are definitely times where like walking zombies oh yeah, yeah. i'm sure <laughs> well, you yeah. look like the rest of the new of new york city so, yeah. <laughs> right. true, true. so you fit right in um i wanted to ask about really just career aspirations um you mentioned it a little bit before mm -hmm. And then same thing with you, uh, Dave, about, you know, just like what it is, what like career interests you have. But like upon graduation, like what are some aspirations, like some fields that you might be interested in? Again, just like to repeat it since we brought it up so much earlier on. And then who or what kind of inspired those? Um, so I was a math and computer science major. And my mom is actually a programmer. She has been ever since, well, uh, my parents are from the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. but they moved here. And so ever since she's been here, she's been a, a like a programmer. Um, and I kind of, and my dad was an architect. And so they're both really smart with like math stuff, I guess. They started teaching me a lot of mathematical concepts at a young age, same with my grandma. And my mind always kind of just like worked like that, like it was geared towards it. So. Uh, they kind of inspired that in me. I think like it just kind of came natural because of them, I feel like. And um, in terms of career aspirations, I want to be uh, somewhere in the software engineering field or like data science. Uh, you know, that just kind of naturally follows like I think those majors. Um, maybe quantitative finance, uh, potentially somewhere along the line. But yeah, we'll, we'll just see where the road takes me, you know, something like that though. So haven't yeah. been around like the whole numbers thing your whole life. W were you multiplying via lattice? Uh, <laughs> That's a deep cut right there. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I have like a talent that sometimes like my friends just like tell me to multiply like a couple of big numbers in my head, and then I do it, yeah. and then they do it on the calculator and see if I can get it right. Eighteen times thirty-six. It's gonna. I was gonna say you yeah. just set yourself oh, up. Uh oh. Uh, Whenever <laughs> we need like math done, we just go to David. <laughs> I'm taking too long with this. I know this you can do it. You're doing it in your head. It's fine. I know you can yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. For real. I uh, did choose the nine times. 648 or something. Is that it? That's <laughs> the clip. That's <laughs> the clip. Bro. That's the clip. Oh, my God. The, it took too I mean, long. Me, I would take me, like, me like on the table. five to ten. Four. Well, the thing is, like, God. I should just know 18 squared and multiply it by two, but I, I mean, forgot. I mean, you should. It. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, I would like to follow that with I haven't taken a math class in four years. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of the opposite of me. <laughs> I was, yeah, just, I was, I was the same way. So dumb yeah. after David just described his career aspirations. <laughs> no. um, so no, I'm no. MCC and journalism. <laughs> Hey, shout out all the journalism majors out there. Yeah, sir. Um, That's what I did. Nope. See, shout out all the journalism majors. Yeah, out exactly. There. Um, we don't have to. We don't have to be smart. Nah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> new opportunities. <laughs> but no, not but, like that. Not like that. <laughs> but it's impressive. Funnily enough, my grandma actually was a math major, and I did have mm. to. I was good at math. I just hated Chose, it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> You're like sure. <laughs> um, so I. Well, since you went into your background, I'm going to go into my background. Yeah, um, so my mom is a professional violinist by training, and my dad runs the Utah Symphony and Opera. So I grew up in a very arts-oriented family. Um, my sisters and I all have very, very different personalities, but I knew I always wanted to go into the arts in some way. And I always, Project Runway was, I don't know if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. That was my shit oh, when I was yeah. nine. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, I did not get the design gene, however. Um, <laughs> I would like make these little drawings and then my dad would be like, that's so good, Bella. And it would literally just be a replica of whatever I saw in that episode. <laughs> um, but I want to go into digital marketing and PR, preferably for a luxury fashion company. I was lucky enough to intern with one for their six months last spring into the summer. Um, called Alta Zara. Shout out for that lovely unpaid internship. I loved it, but it was 40 hours like a week death unpaid. Death against unpaid internship. Right. Mm. Actually, in the negative, because I had to get school credit. Oh, of course, yeah. And of course, you know, with NYU, that's not cheap. Right. Um, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Robbery. My motto for the summer was I love waking up in the negative. <laughs> but I wake up in the negative as a full time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Just saying. <laughs> You're like, did you hear that, NYU? <laughs> yeah, exactly. For real. Um, but yeah, definitely something more creative, but like also analytic, not analytic, but like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, actually. Digital marketing and PR. There we go. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. That's super dope. No, very yeah. cool. Yeah, go ahead. Um, no, I was going to say that's, you, as you said earlier, obviously in the right place for mm -hmm. that. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of endless here. Um, and then, of course, what we do is a is like pseudo PR, sort of. Mm -hmm. Like there's a level of that yeah. to all the stuff that we do. Um, and it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly like Kai said was what I was going to say before, bro. What better place to do it? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. not going to get the opportunities like you are here mm -hmm. anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Well, I know you consider like, well, not considered, but you were speaking about how like, hey, like New York has got it. LA's got it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Either of you been to LA at all? I uh, have once mm -hmm. the summer dropped me off my little sister at college. Uh, what'd you think of it? Where'd she go to school? She goes to, uh, LMU, Loyola Marymount. Uh, okay. mm. yeah, yeah. yeah, she is an acting major. Right. Wait, does she swim? Or no? She did, and then she quit. Okay, because uh, I know someone that's what I'm saying. I know. My older sister and I did not quit. She quit. That's uh, what I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, she loves it. Um, but it was interesting. It's not the same as New York at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't spend that much time there to really get to know it, but... That's also a very, very interesting place. Yeah, no, seriously, yeah. I bring it up because, because Kai, you went what last uh, summer? Yeah, I've, I've been there like a last handful spring. of times, but last spring I was there most yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, I went for the first time in my life this past September, so like not much longer mm -hmm. after you. Mm -hmm. And like downtown LA, when you hear the term downtown, you think it's this like glamorous place. No, it's f up. It's <laughs> like, disgusting. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's rough. The yeah. But then again, worst it's like, like New York. part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it is quite the opposite. Well, that's but, my thing. Oh, I was going to say, but at least in New York, you can say you're in New York. Yeah, exactly. Like, downtown right. L.A. is gross. No, it's it's yeah, horrible. It's well, because that's my thing about L.A. is, like, it's not a city. It's a bunch of towns yes. in a valley like that they together. call a city. That yeah. There's so many cool places in there mm -hmm. and, like, a lot of great stuff going on. But, like, come on. It's not yeah. a city. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So next training trip will be in L.A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Trevor yeah. would never take us <laughs> no there. Shot. No shot. No shot. He'd be cursing under his breath for six hours instead of three. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Kai, do you have anything else? I'm good. This has been a lot of fun. This yeah. is fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything for us? Uh, thanks for having us on, I guess. Yeah. yeah that's all I have. For sure. Okay, for sure. cool. I mean, yo, um, y'all listen to Science Behind the Violets podcast episode number eight with Bella Broswick and David Basin from our men's and women's swimming teams. Keep it locked to NYU Athletics on social as well as go nyuathletics.com for all of the latest. Thank you.